hello everyone welcome to my channel pharmacist point so today's video is how to calculate insulin dose part 3 so if you have not watched part 1 and part 2 go and watch those videos i have put the link in the description box because this video is the continuation of those videos so go and watch that first then come to this video so let's get started so in part 1 and 2 we have covered the introduction and how to calculate insulin dose in type 1 diabetes so this video is how to calculate insulin dose in type 2 diabetes so in we know in type 2 diabetes the picture is different where the pancreas produce a little amount of insulin so based on that insulin dose dosing is going to be different not like type 1 diabetes so usually for type 2 diabetes patient when does he require insulin so if his hba1c level is greater than 7 percentage even after 2 to 3 months of dual oral hypoglycemic agents we can start insulin in such kind of patients so there are two regimens here so first is insulin augmentation therapy where insulin is just started and then comes insulin replacement therapy when insulin augmentation fails we go for insulin replacement so i'll explain it in detail so in insulin augmentation patient has symptomatic hyperglycemia he's showing symptoms of hyperglycemia his hb a1c level is more than nine percentage even after two to three oral hypoglycemic agents or glp1 agonist like liraglutide, exanatide, even after taking all these drugs, his HPA1C is like more than 9%, we can start insulin in such patients. Now, insulin replacement comes into picture when the blood glucose level is more than 300 to 350 mg per deciliter and HPA1C level is like more than 10 to 12% and insulin augmentation is completely failed in such kind of patients then we can go for insulin replacement so in this video we are only going to talk about insulin augmentation insulin replacement is something different which will be discussed later part one i have already discussed about the goal of insulin which was a general goal coming to type 2 diabetes the goal is going to change so for patient with no risk of hypoglycemia his fp G, that is fasting blood glucose can be between 80 to 30, 130 or 70 to 110 and here uh, one thing here i'm using american diabetes association guidelines and american association of clinical endocrinology guidelines these are my references guys so based on that this video entire video is created okay so his fpg level can be anywhere between 70 to 110 or 80 to 130 and ppbs values can be less than 180 or 140 and bedtime values or you can say random blood sugar should be like 100 to 140 and hpa1c should be less than 7 to 8 percentage in case of patients with comorbid conditions and risk of hypoglycemia the fbg level can be between 100 to 150 and hpa1c can be 7 to 8 percentage so there is a little more extended target level for patients with risk of hypoglycemia and comorbid conditions so this is how the goal changes coming to key points so from this part of the video I need your concentration guys otherwise you're not going to understand so remember this thing so initially for a type 2 diabetes patients we are going to start a dose of insulin for this patient so, so I have discussed a point in part 1 video that insulin dosing is always a trial and error like sort of thing so starting dose will not be right for a patient the things to remember is that first an insulin dose will be started then it will be adjusted after one or two weeks after measuring the blood glucose levels and then there is chance of hypoglycemia so when a hypoglycemic episode occurs the insulin dose is going to change again so usually such patients should be monitored like on a monthly basis blood glucose levels should be under control and follow up is very very important for patients taking insulin the starting dose is based on hpa1c if it is less than 8 we can go for 0.1 units per kg as basal and bolus also 0.1 units per kg if it's 8 to 10 we go for 0.2 units per kg if it's greater than 10 we go 0.3 units per kg so initially based on this we start a dose after that we have to titrate the dose by checking the fasting blood glucose of the patient like after one or two weeks after even starting an initial dose the patient's blood glucose levels are not under control we can increase insulin dose by one or two units so this can be increased once or twice weekly until the blood glucose is at the target range or at the goal now if the patient is having a hypoglycemic event we have to decrease the insulin to 2 to 4 units or 10 to 20 percentage 
So in simple terms, after starting an initial insulin dose, we have to follow up the patient. After one week, check his fasting blood glucose. If it is not under control, we have to increase the insulin dose by one to two units. And if the patient is having hypoglycemia, we have to decrease the insulin dose by two to four units from the units which we have started or prescribed before. So this is the story which goes on and on and on for the patient. Okay, so this thing is, this is in a clinical perspective way. Now coming to different regimens, insulin augmentation. So I know it looks scary. So this is insulin protocol. Uh, I hope it is simple for you. Okay, so insulin protocol. So there are different insulin protocols. So first is basal only protocol which is a long-acting insulin is given at night. Usually, glycine is preferred with metformin and sulfonylurea, which where glipicide is preferred. So, if this protocol doesn't work for a patient and his blood glucose levels are still high, we step up to next protocol, basal plus protocol, where rapid-acting insulin is introduced before meal, before one meal, then long-acting insulin at night or morning with metformin coming to basal bolus protocol if the other one doesn't work again we step up to basal bolus protocol where rapid acting insulin is given before two meals then long acting insulin then metformin coming to basal bolus intensive protocol where metformin is out of the picture no more metformin we are going to give rapid acting insulin before three meals with long acting insulin at night then comes basal bolus insulin with nph so sometimes rapid acting insulins are costly so doctors prefer nph which should be given twice daily so in this case we give metformin with nph acting as the basal insulin and regular insulin acting as the bolus insulin so we give two-third of the basal insulin and one-third of the bolus insulin this is a kind of a difficult regimen compared to other four so usually not preferred much but still there is a regimen like this now here i have seen from my personal experience i have seen more of this regimen that is pre-mixed insulin protocol where already pre-mixed insulins are available like short acting with an intermediate acting insulin 75 25 usually i've seen isofen insulin 70 percentage with regular insulin 30 percentage so this is like available in india so this is like dosed twice daily for the patient so it's either it's dose two third of the dose in the morning and one third of the dose at night or half of the dose in the morning half of the dose at the night so this is how it's prescribed with metformin these are the different protocols so if you have seen any other way how insulin is prescribed you can mention this in the comment section so that everyone gets to know how it's prescribed even i have not seen anything different so usually i have seen come across this with pre-mixed insulin protocol coming to an example try to solve this by yourself take a paper and write down the patient was initially on bedtime nph insulin of 30 units now we have to switch his regimen of NPH into twice daily dosing by reducing the 80 percentage of his current bedtime NPH dose. So question means is that the patient is already on a dose of NPH 30 units. Now we have to give this 30 unit dose twice daily by reducing 80 percentage of 30 units. So try to solve this. So just reduce 80 percentage of 30 units and try to think how you're going to give this, how you're going to divide this dose for the day. So based on insulin augmentation, I think you should have an idea regarding this. So the answer here is current bedtime NPH dose is 30 units. So 80 percentage of 30 units is 24 units. Now how to divide? As I said, two third will be in the morning. 16 units in the morning and one third of that dose will be in the evening that is eight units in the evening so the, this is how we calculate insulin dose two third and one third just remember two third dose goes in the morning two third dose is always the basal or the background insulin which is required in more amount and one third of the dose is always bolus insulin which is just required before meals so that's all you guys in this video try to watch this video again till you understand different points and concepts which i've gone through this try to watch my previous previous video so that you will understand more when you come to other videos so don't forget to subscribe pharmacist point because this insulin series videos is going to be six parts so i hope this is simple and easy to understand i tried to break down the concepts one by one and i have also taken a lot of time to prepare this video so share it with your friends if this was informative thanks for watching have a nice day ahead